you are welcome to part two in the green flag. Uh, what we are going to teach you this afternoon is how to handle the equipment you be coming across in the laboratories, in part two laboratories. The equipment we are touching, we guide you through all the experiments you are going to perform in this lab. We have different uh, laboratory equipment here, and I will be picking it one by one, and I will be introducing how it is being used in performing laboratory experiments. First and foremost, I would like to introduce to you what is being referred to as a power supply. Though we have different type of different type of power supply, but the one you'll be coming across mostly this time around, this time around in your experiment, in performing your experiment, is DC power supply. You all know what a DC power supply is. Say, for example, the battery we are using in our vehicle is using a DC battery. Even the battery that you are using in your laptop for operation is a DC battery. It's enabling it, where it is being energized, it enables you to use it for whatever what you want to use to perform. So, what I'm introducing to you as said, has been said earlier is power supply, which is DC. Uh, we have a power supply, two types of power supply in our labs here. We have analog type of power supply, and we also have a digital type of power supply. You know, nowadays, digital power supply is being used mostly but at the same time, you still need to know and familiarize yourself with how to handle both analog and digital power supply. Because you can come across of it, any of it anywhere, and you should be able to know to handle it with your experiment. Power supply is, as I said earlier, is a DC power supply that has positive and negative terminals. And the type of power supply we are using mostly in a lab here is a variable type. That is, you can use it, you can start from zero to 30 volts. Meaning that you can vary your voltage. Depends on the amount of voltage given to you to energize your circuit that will de determine the amount of voltage you are going to, going to turn your power supply to. Now, if you look at the DC power supply digital, the one in my front now, you can see buttons attached to it. The buttons has a role to play there. Say for example, this particular power supply is a dual type, that is 21. You can use it, it's having two channels. It provides two channels for you. You either use one channel or the two channels at, at, the, at the same time. Depends on the type of circuit you design to energize. If you look at the first channel here, you see three buttons attached to it. The same button attached to the second channel. How is it used? Let's say, for example, now the first button here you see a quartz reaching on top of it, and you see another one with fine tuning button. The third one is a is a current limit, limit uh, button. Now, assuming you are given a circuit and you ask to power it, before going to that, you can see the out output terminals here. 
positive and negative. Positive and negative. There are two parallel lines. We should never come together directly. There must be a load in between before we can see each other. So, and the color for the, positive, for the negative terminal is always uh, black. It could be blue at times, either blue or black. The positive terminal is also designated in terms of color as red. It may be red, it may be brown. That is the coerced button. That coerced button enables you to vary your voltage. Enable you to vary your voltage. Say, for example, you want you are asked to, to energize your circuit uh, voltage, circuit with a voltage of uh, say 10 volts. It's just a matter of going to the quartz button. You vary it until you obtain your 10 volts. That is your 10 volts. You can see that I also use a fine-tuning button here now to enable me obtain that uh, 10 volt. Not that I cannot obtain that 10 volt directly from here, but to ease my, my, my tuning, so I have to go to the fine-tuning button. This current button now, any time you are energizing a circuit, always make it make sure that you put it at the maximum clockwise let it be at the maximum clockwise and when you are doing your connection remember i told you that we have negative and positive terminal under no circumstances that you should connect what is supposed to be connected to the positive to the negative because if you, if you reverse it, it will give you the reverse uh, answer you ask. Probably it can even damage the circuit you've designed. And in situations where you, are, you, may, uh, may, you made a mistake, when it comes to connection, uh, the, the people that actually the, design this particular uh, power supply, Put a such something we call a protecting device there. You just see a button being chipped off, and you see an indicator of a, a, a light here telling you. So far, with what we've had so far, I think uh, what's applicable in the first channel here also applicable to the second channel on this particular digital power supply. Thank you. This equipment, just like the former equipment introduced to you, you call it power supply, DC power supply, variable DC power supply, so to say. Some of the technologists in this department constructed this one, though it might not be look beautiful, but at least so far it can serve the need of a student, that was why we just put it together to control this one. Now, it can be varied between zero and 25 volt maximum and at current of two ampere. That is the maximum current this one can deliver is just two ampere. Like the other one, the other instructor taught to you, that one can uh, supply at least at most four ampere at 35 volt range. But this one can only give you two uh, ampere. So if, you are, if your circuit is uh, going to draw more than two ampere, you dare not use this one. Then you choose another one. And in this lab, there's no way you can draw up to that. The maximum we normally draw here is around one ampere, maximum. So that is it. So you switch this one on and not from here, from this, this is on and not button. When you switch it on, look at it, it's going to deploy something. OAU technology design at elect elect department. That is it. So if you vary the voltage from here. This is the quartz adjust. Very up to that. When if you try to exist the voltage, it will just 
part of that to protect this instrument. And this is defined adjust control. This one. This is defined adjust control. That is all what you need to know here. And you have the positive here, you have the negative here. Naturally, you're supposed to have a color red for the connecting wire. But just use this one, this pink wire, to represent your positive uh, terminal wire and this one to represent the negative terminal wire. The only thing is that anytime you finish up the connection in this laboratory, make sure you call the attention of the instructor to check your circuit before you power it because we cannot afford any student damaging any of our equipment and the component we are going to connect. Thank you. This is another type of power supply you contactly find found in the laboratory. Now, you can see from the meter, this is voltage, 0 to 30, at 2 ampere. That is the maximum current it can handle. If you try to you know, connect it to a circuit, any circuit that can draw more than 2 amp, then it will start to misbehave. So also, you switch it on and not from air, naturally. So on and not from here, but because the switch is not working, so we have already bypassed that one. So when you switch on from the socket, then the whole thing will come on. Now, this is the quartz adjust. That is, you want to vary the voltage between 0, 5, 10, 15, then you use this one. If you want to use any voltage, maybe 0 0.2, 0 0.1, 0 0.3, 0 0.4, then you use this one to select it gradually. That is all. At times, maybe the manual has to okay, select your DC, your uh, voltage to 2.2. Then, if you want to select this one at 2 to 2, then you now use one to add 0.2 and whatever to it. That is another time you want to use, uh, you don't want to consume the final the 2 ampere, then you can select this one. This, if you select this one, it means it will vary between 0 and 30 at 1 ampere range. But like I told you before, you don't need to bother your head. Just select the maximum of 2 ampere. Then you are done. Thank you. The instrument before us is analog power supply. The one we've been showing you before are digital. But this one is analog in nature. Naturally, it is a variable DC source, but analog type. And the current limit of this one, you can see, it's also two out, just like the one I showed you before on the uh, digital. It's also analog. If you don't want to use up to two amp, maybe you already know that your the what your circuit can consume is not up to that. You can select 0 0.5 amp, which is 500 the milliamp. But nevertheless, you don't even need to bother your head. Just use the maximum one. Then the circuit will just take whatever you wanted to use there. Now this is the variable control now. For this one, you vary it like this, and you get the voltage. You can see from the uh, meter here, you can see 0 to 50 and 0 to 25. You have to select that one here. If you want to use the one of 0 to 25, you put this uh, button down. If it's 0 to 50 you want to use, just put it on, uh, up. This one, if it is on standby and you vary, it will never work. It will never desert anything until you select this switch and put it on DC on. This is DC on. If you now vary, it will now uh, give you output. This is the positive terminal and this is the negative terminal.